Hello everybody, welcome to Zoomed America. My name is Nate, I'm one of the trainers here. I'm Adam, I'm a project specialist. And we're excited to have you guys into Zoomed America in our lovely demo center behind me. Uh, today we're going to be doing a bunch of routing. What's it called? Route, route, routing with Zoomed, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody, we're glad to have you here. Uh, so, by all means, what we are going to be showing here behind me is the G3 L3200. Yep. One of the many different sized machines that we have in our fleet, in our arsenal. Uh, looking great. Uh, they are a modular design. You know, originally people could buy this machine without any gantry or anything on it and to easily be able to upgrade it, your existing machine that you already own, uh, with a 3.6 kilowatt router, with you know, one an ultrasonic router. tool, and one kilowatt router, all these different things. Uh, modular design that what sets us apart for sure. Uh, so. L3200, we got a conveyor on there, we got our L, uh, uh, our 3.6 kilowatt router, there it is, 3.6 kilowatt router. We made it bigger and more powerful than our one kilowatt router, so you can cut more per pass and save some time and make sure that you guys are efficiently running absolutely everything. Yep. What we're going to be doing right, right away is some die bond. We're going to be utilizing the tandem feature of this table. Uh, tandem being we're going to be able to close the vacuum off on the front or back so we could load and unload pages. Mm -hmm. so. I exclusively use tandem mode when I'm routing just so when I can, uh, when I'm routing in the front, I'll shut off the back so I have better suction where I'm actually yep. cutting from. So great, that great stuff. Things don't move around and get all cattywampus on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why don't we just get right into it? We're going to cut a lot of stuff today, so we might as well... Uh, start now let's start it on up you got old job up there no problem switching yep. from job to job no big deal i have uh, these ones saved on the desktop but we have a queue feature where we can filter through yeah. it's a little bit quicker to pull out of the off the desktop for yep. this application nice thing with that cut queue is you can point out which jobs you want to cut first second third and fourth so you can let the operators know which ones are the most important yep. to do right away so with that tandem feature that we talked about I have to acknowledge that I'm going to be using the front of the of the cutter. So if you saw me press that button, that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. This is what well, tandem mode is, man. Yep. We're starting in one side, get ready on the back, and then once it's done cutting this first one, uh, and then by all means you got to jump to the back and hit the button in there, and then it's just back and forth after that. We'll be using a flip cut on this one, so we'll be actually cutting from the back. Flip cut. Heck yeah. Oh, that reminds wow. me. I should replace. We can do that while we can do that while we're working up front because we have tandem. Heck yeah! So shows you exactly which way to flip this thing around. It's always on the Y axis. Otherwise, I'm gonna do that over here on the back while we get ready for it. Because the nice thing about flip cutting is only the first copy needs to be registered from the top side. So as you can see, Nate was able to flip that piece in the back over while we had the vacuum on in the front. I mean, re-registering that same edge, but this time it's on the left side. Mm -hmm. Go do an automatic bit change now. Good old yeah. arc. I love this thing. We're spoiled here at Zoomed America for yeah. sure. Uh, I couldn't imagine doing three, four, five hand bit changes uh, in the same job over well, and over and over again. Well, you could. You just wouldn't enjoy it as much. Exactly. I would not enjoy it. So what's nice about it is it's going to drop the bit it has puts it away, grabs the next one, and then goes and initializes for you with our lovely ITIs here. Yep. Integrated tool initialization. We can initialize router bits, blades, creasing wheels, perforating tools, yep. uh, just about everything we can initialize with that ITI. Touchless If you watched earlier today, we were using the S3 model that has an automatic knife initialization. Yep. With that, we can't, util we can't initialize uh, creasing wheels, yep. but with this one we can. So a little bit better functionality a little bit more automation mm -hmm. so what bit we're using right now we're going to be using well we are using the r141 it's a form routing bit uh, we have many different form routing bits on our website you can check it out but this one's going to put it at like a 45 degree bevel basically so put them two together it like v cuts and you can bend it to a 90 degree angle yeah you know, let me check that let me check one of those out you can see how how so this I'll bit actually looks. Show the R141 right here. Nice form router. We got engraving bits. We got form routes like that. We got 
rollover form routing on the yeah. ends with our 211s and 210s, as well as polishing bits as well, which you'll see in a sec here. Get yourself that nice chamfered edge. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of sign companies, you got to do a bunch of special stuff to take out areas and have a bevel on it. And you can put all these different, uh, all these different applications to use with yeah. our machine. Now we're going to change to an R505 bit, a 5mm diamond-like coated bit. Uh, we came out with the 500 series a few years ago, and they've been a huge success ever since. Get a little bit longer lifespan out of these bits, and they down. stay a little bit cooler. Yeah. I think drop down super fast. We have a Verify Z position after use, so it verifies it before it puts it away, so when the next time it grabs it, it drops down even faster, so you don't have to wait, you know, I don't know, 10 seconds to initialize. Yeah. You can... Save some time where you can. The guys over in Switzerland have really thought of absolutely everything from step A to step Z. Yep. Yeah, with this arc system, the operator can walk away for a little bit and uh, go do something else while the, they can just leave the machine to route. Yep. Look at how fast this thing is flying through. We're getting yep. this done in one pass for this material as well. No issues whatsoever. Cutting through the liner on the back. Yep through an aluminum nice smooth uh, edge which we'll show it. you Nate you want to press that key back there or I can get going on the back side got that Adam like we said we have to acknowledge that we're going to be using the back side of the machine now for tandem yep. it's going to read that left side edge and now yeah it's skipping all the preparing steps reading the top side stuff so you just find the back side edge it's the same Our copy of a, of a job so why have to do all the same stuff over and over and over again our camera is an inch behind that laser pointer, so I know exactly where it is. Yeah, this the software is great. I mean, they've literally tried to make this as easy as possible for you. So right through the back liner. Wanted me to acknowledge that we're going to be uh, clear in the front so I can do a of router bit change because it's going to be using this front space. Oh, yeah. Good call. Safety calls. measures, so it can make sure everyone's clear out of its area. Yeah, safety features. Safety is number one, most definitely. We don't want anybody getting hurt running these machines. And, yep. You know, routing can be scary for sure, so. Yeah, the, that bit's flying around at 50,000 RPM, so yep. definitely but, don't want to have the chance of getting something caught in there. Yeah, they've done their due diligence to make sure that this machine is safest out there. Speaking of safety, we got e-stops all four corners of the machine, light barriers and crash barriers on all on either yeah, side of the happen? beam. If I hit something, you just broke the a light stops. barrier on the back there. You can check it out. On the control panel, it tells me that tells me that a light barrier has been triggered. I acknowledge it. It'll lift the tool up. I can move the machine out of the way to make sure it can clear any uh, debris or. Uh, pieces that have popped up heck yeah put it back online and we're still cutting don't have to restart anything oh nope. yeah it's absolutely massive to be able to do that yeah and by the way even if you want to change the base step the z axis positioning the acceleration the speed the the t axis speed even yeah. if you really wanted to you change, can change all that stuff in the middle change of the job a, change your blade change your router bit if, it, if one breaks yep don't have to stop or restart your job. You can do it in the middle. They try to make this machine as user-friendly and productive, productive as, possible. as possible. So die bond, aluminum composite. I've never had any issues cutting this stuff out. Nope. With our regular universal router bits, the 200 series, or even even more so with these 500 series bits. So this thing is so accurate, we could actually... Uh, we could actually route to this liner and kind of use that to hold stuff in. How so is again, this it wants me to acknowledge in, right? that I'm clear from the front because it's gonna, it's got to come and do this bit change. There you go. So how is this getting held down? Well, we got a little table play like that. I'm gonna watch out for this bit change here, just making sure I don't break any light barriers and stop the whole process. No big deal if I did. I'd just go back online, but. So I'll try to be try to be more safe than sorry, and that's for sure. Love that touchless ITI. You don't have to wreck your bits or your blades just to get them initialized. 
Don't have to initialize again or uh, read the border again because we already did that. Just picks up right where it left off. So here we go. So with the table place feature, we can zone down this machine. And especially with the tandem mode, I can shut off the whole right side, keep it open in the middle, and then on the left I can shut it off as well as the whole back side. So it reads that automatically and changes where these zones open and close for you when you register your material. Yep. Uh, it's a tur uh, turbine vacuum, a nine kilowatt turbine. Variable speed, one to one to ten. So, uh, not every material we have to route at ten. Yep. So that'd be the highest speed. Yeah, it's not just an on and off type thing. You have different levels that you can have for suction. So, you know, always thinking about wear and tear when it all comes down to it. You you, you don't want to make this thing work harder than it actually has to. And with the material profiling system, which we'll get to in a second here with the material profiling system, uh, it can keep track of all that stuff for you. So you don't even have to think about it, quite honestly. Pull these pieces off, we're gonna switch materials real quick. Yeah, and like, check out this uh, this table here. Let me get a little closer for you. Oh, excuse me. After Adam gets out of the way, there we go. Bringing it close. I'm just dialing it in just through the control panel myself, and look how clean that is. We have multiple different dust extractors for sure. Um, the one we're using is great. I mean, in the middle of a job, if it is like sucking up some parts, which we don't want, yeah, we can put bridges and stuff in there, but by all means, you can open this up and close this down too, just to kind of finesse that whichever way that you want. So, super, super clean routing. Dun, 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 dun. One, seven, two, two. One seven two two. I'm gonna sting this, set, set this to the back here. Stop it there. Easy enough. Throw our job on. We cutting some pal board. Uh huh. Make sure that's nice and flat. We got a protective seal grip to protect this conveyor belt, so you don't end up with uh, cuts into your belt in high and low spots. So. This thing's going to rip through this as well. I think we just got one, one pass. pass on yep. this too. Might switch out to a different bit. I'm, I'm unsure. Uh, yeah, switch. So I think we six. will be. Nope. <laughs> no, it still uses the five. I guess. So even if that was a different bit that I wanted to go with, I didn't have to trigger that myself. Nope. That's, all, that's all built into the job file. That's all in the job file, exactly. So uh, that is no big deal to have that just come over to the arc and grab the bit that you need and uh, have to pick up and initialize and go. So no hand changing, you know, forgetfulness, we're human, things happen. Uh, but it really takes care of that stuff for you with our material profile system and hot folders and our whole workflow overall. Yep. So now it looks like we do have a finishing pass on this one just to clean up those edges. You got a little finish. Okay, yeah. It's doing it twice. You know, we have full control of how many passes it can take. Yeah. And normally you want to go as deep as the width of the bit that you're going to be using, depending right. on the density of the material. Yeah, with this pal board, we could definitely take it all take it all out with one pass. Yep. But and if you guys nice, are, uh, sorry, go ahead. Adam. I was going to say just to get a nice clean edge. Yeah. We want to do that finishing pass. And if you guys are unsure or scared to do some routing, by all means, we can have you come in for training, hands-on training, or virtual as well, and. You can have me teach you how to route, honestly. And me and my buddy John over there in the training department, we'll pass our knowledge as much and as best as we can so you can route as efficiently and as safe as possible as well. There's definitely a lot to routing when it yeah. all comes down to it. Yeah. How is this router cooled? How is that cooled? Well, it... This one is liquid cooled. Mm -hmm. Our one kilowatt router is air cooled, but this one we have a external cooling unit where it pumps cold liquid through it to keep the spindle uh, at, a, at the correct temperature. We yep. also have um, the minimal quantity lubricating system on it. So see this whole hose right here, that actually um, squirts just a small amount of oil onto the bit if we're routing say aluminum, just pure aluminum. With these 500 series bits, we don't necessarily need it, 
but it helps just to keep I'd the still flag use down. It. What other router options do we have? We have the one kilowatt router, um, like we keep talking about. That is the probably the direct alternative to the 3.6. Let's just bring this up. 172. We yeah, also have a universal routing tool, which is a smaller router, mostly used for uh, for small engraving, small precise engraving. Mm -hmm. You want to hold it? Yeah. Stop this. There you go. Bit of debris on there, but the nice Look at that clean finish. edge. These aren't printed, even new blades that we're using for this. Printed by the on way. a Swiss Q. We've, we've been abusing these blades. Friends over, over the there are kind enough to let us uh, dialing these things in. Or these bits, I should say. Have a printer in our demo center so we can print some things on the fly. Mm -hmm. Next, we're gonna cut some acrylic. Yeah, we got some acrylic for you. Sneeze guards, being able to easily, you know, stay fluid with your business, right? We have, we went through 2020, which was a crazy year, and a lot of our people came through and switched over to cutting PPE for, you know, the frontline workers out there, and they're easily able to do that with our machine. You don't have to buy a whole new machine to have that done. So the modularity with our machines, it's absolutely critical in times of crisis, right? And sneeze we were guards, working the whole face time. shields, face masks. Yep. We're developing ways to do virtual training and virtual demos, all that stuff so we can, you know, keep America running, quite honestly. Just adjusting my uh, register mark. These marks are a little bit smaller. You can do all that on the fly. ICC camera there. You can have preset settings for there. You, you might be potentially registering polka dot material maybe, yep. right? So being able to minimum and maximum with your uh, your dots that you want to use uh, and, and being able to set a preset for that. So it's just one quick click and then away you go. Change my color settings, my brightness, uh, contrast. It's got a flashlight on that thing. Yep. That one has variable, uh, is variable. I can turn that light level from one to one to five. You really have some tough material to read or, or working in a space that isn't that well lit. Mm -hmm. We're uh, kind of spoiled here with all the lighting that we have. <laughs> right. so it can be a blessing and a curse sometimes when we're <laughs> trying to work with the cameras. Uh -huh. So I'm sure the routers out there know routing small pieces can be nerve wracking at times, right? And there's a certain way that you have to be able to hold those pieces in. With these small guys that we're cutting right now, they have little bridges inside of those. And with our process, our workflow, we can automatically separate what shapes get a bridge applied to it, how many bridges, how close you want those bridges to each yep. other. You do all that stuff with the workflow without even having to think about it. Yep, that way we don't have to worry about losing parts because they move around yeah. and really save, um, save the production time by having less waste. Yeah. Save yourself some time, save yourself material, save yourself some stress, none of that stuff. As you'll see when we finish, they just kind of break off. And won't even be noticeable once the, you have the finished part. Yep. You can determine how wide those bridges are. You'll see it skip. But basically, yeah, how wide it is, how deep it goes, yep. all that stuff. We have full functionality with that, and then you can save it as a default, so uh, you don't have to really figure it out ever again. This is one I'm, pass as well. How, how thick is this acrylic? I think it's about, about a quarter inch. Quarter inch acrylic, one pass, no problem. Man, that thing looks clean. Yeah, the the smaller pieces we do, we did in two passes just because of the bridges. Because of those bridges, yeah. The bridges are so thin that if we did it. Sorry, the question was, uh, why did we have to do the bridges in two passes? Yep. If we did it in one pass, the bridges would be thick, and they would be a lot harder to break off, yeah. or they would stay on there with, for the finished part, and you'd have to sand it down. Yeah. It'd be in the entire thickness of the material. So we'll show you. We'll show you when the part's finished. It depends on the last depth pass. So 
you have full functionality of saying, hey, I want this bridge to be a 16th of an inch or a 32nd of an inch or even... We got you the know. film hanging on. I mean, look at how close that got. We still got it just to the, <laughs> just to the liner, and that's how accurate this machine is. So, there's our bridge. Some of the film back there, but that is the bridge. Just breaks off. And pop those off and then clean them up. And then with the power of technology, <laughs> hey, there it is. We already made it for you. <laughs> well, let's these uh, guards. Get this one off, and we can show off some polishing. Heck yeah! Nice, great prints on here. Buddy's over at Swiss Q helping us out. Love this printer. Love this material. Love this machine. Got one more here. Yeah, we'll leave that guy in the back. That's all good. Sure, it's not going it to hurt anything. Hurting anyone back there. <laughs> so this we got some half inch acrylic uh, do a process before it's called surface compensation where it's going to measure uh, the top of the material see if there's any deviations mm -hmm. a little bit more accuracy that we can add in yep we can take us about a minute and a half to do all this and yeah we're be polishing the edges so there's a process that we can <clears> apply in our cut editor you know, we have an editor along with our software whenever you buy one of these machines and purchase the software with it as well. Sorry, what? Yep, we're going to do some aluminum after this, most definitely. Work off a reference point right here, show a little bit different ways that we can uh, mm -hmm. choose our spot in the material. Yeah, yeah. just say you got to cut one real quick, just find a spot and send it. Yep. So what it's doing right now, it's going to bring that uh, suction bell down just go until the brushes touch, and that's measuring the top of the material. Yep, just feeling for a piece of resistance, honestly. So yeah, what that does for you is it, it gets you good, accurate depths of your engravements, right? Yep. Your fills that you do, your, your bevels, your routes of your form and routing and all that stuff. So a good, consistent routing at the end of the day. We don't necessarily need to do this on this job because we're not engraving, but why not show it off? Why not? Super still knows simple that, process. Still knows in. that uh, distance, so it goes down super fast. Yeah. I love using that Verify Z because it's so much faster to reinitialize it then. It's a time saver. You know, the guys in Switzerland, they're always trying to figure out how to save time, whether it's through the workflow process or if it's little things like dropping to initialize a little bit faster. Do our finishing pass right now. Notice how it's a little bit slower, so to ensure the material doesn't move around. Yeah. Now we'll go to that polishing bit. Mm -hmm. This guy's naturally going to be a little bit dirtier. It's a six millimeter bit. That Big we, flutes. That we did a few passes, so. And plus we definitely maxed it out with this multi-pass. Yeah. So this thing can be a, too powerful at times. <laughs> What is changing to is the polishing bit. We have two different polishing bits. This is the P201. It's a synthetic diamond on it. Uh, the benefit of that is you can polish up to, I think I want to say 12 millimeters per pass. Um, and then the good expensive one is the, not, not expensive, but like more price. The P106 definitely, it does a good job for sure. Yeah. It does a great job. Uh, but you can't polish as much per pass, so that's why I like using this P201. Yeah, the main difference is between this one and the and the other one is the other one can be resharpened. This one, once it dulls, got to replace it. Yeah, definitely super nice to be able to resharpen that. Just tear this film off. So. You don't have to pre-pull any of this paper. It cuts right through that stuff, no problem. Anyone who's cut acrylic knows how like much of a pain this, this can be. So with our cut editor, we apply the polishing path to it. So show so off that nice polished edge. Does the automatic offset, sets the gap for you. So polishing paths. Uh, 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 what other words am I thinking of? Hatch filling, island filling, 
auto fit inlays or cut editor can apply yeah. all that stuff to these jobs coming through. Right out nice of the box. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. So I got some aluminum to finish this thing off. I'm gonna watch our MQL in action. Minimum quantity <laughs> lubrication. <laughs> all these acronyms. We got. <laughs> I swear we got like 200. There's a uh, lot. Uh, gets me good. Add in gets a register step real quick, because why not? I can. Border front right. Move that to the top. Do a border recognition on this thing. So, yeah, yeah, you don't have to have it perfectly straight. Doing a little bit of an offset off of the zero no, zero. Don't want to be enough. right on the corner. That software, it's great. Quickly change my job and make it a little bit more accurate. Mm -hmm. So, I think we are ready. And then away you go. Read right. that border. Doesn't have to worry about doing a tool change. It'll do it automatically once we uh, finish this registration. You know, the Wait. workflow points out which shapes it wants to do routing on a quality mode compared to routing on a speed mode. And that can have different priorities set up, set up in our cut manager. So it can put everything where it needs to go and use the perfect bits with yep. the perfect numbers per, uh, per material profile. So... The yeah, profile like, system, it's really, really awesome to be able to dial all that stuff in and not have to worry about remembering all those numbers every single time. While we're on the subject, let's talk about the material profile a little bit. Yeah, we got material a little bit database. Of time. Why not? We can talk about it while we're cutting. So, with the software, we have a full access to our uh, material database that comes standard with the Zune Cut Center software. Showing off the profiles. We have there we go. Filtered by different categories, soft board, rigid board, self-adhesive, vinyls, non-adhesives. There you go. Uh, have our textiles, leather, composites. Right out of the box, some get all these profiles. Yep, some materials that we made. So right now the MQL is doing its thing, guys. It's spraying oil right onto the bit to keep it cool and sharp. But not enough where it ever affect the job. Yeah, we do tests when we install all this stuff to make sure it doesn't spray too much. Wait for that powerful vacuum to get off. Nice clean edge on that aluminum. Beautiful. Zero issues. What what size bit was that? That was a four millimeter bit. Four the millimeter. R five oh four. Zero zero issues. Love it. Aluminum, acrylic, PVC, uh, ACM. ACM. I I could go forever with all the different materials that we're we can actually cut with this machine. Pretty much anything but steel and glass we can do. A little bit of everything and the modularity of it all helps you change whatever you are cutting in in a drop of a dime if you really need to okay yeah. so by all means hope you guys had a great time watching us route some stuff out for you um, if you want to go over to zoom.com and schedule up a demo and see this stuff for yourself whether it's in person or virtually uh, we can get that done for you and uh, you know show off this beautiful location that we just built about a year ago so yeah. on behalf of zoom america my name's nate i'm adam and thank you for having us. Have a good day, guys. Thanks. Bomb puzzle.